If you've been having errors trying to connect Flutterflow to Firebase, this is the video for you. We're gonna look at common errors, what people are saying, and how you can achieve this for your next project. Now, to begin, if you wanna follow along with our Flutterflow for Beginners guide, there's a link down below. We'll watch all of this completely free right now on YouTube. So let's begin to get started. To identify the error that you're having, it's important that you're either screenshotting the exact error notice that you're getting or you're writing it down. This is so you can identify what error you have because there could be so many different things, but this is to giving you the framework how you can solve this. To begin, make sure that you have your Flutterflow account, you're signing in, and you also have Firebase and you're signing in to the correct Gmail account that you plan on using. If you have multiple Gmail accounts, you could be having a conflict when you try to sync it and that could be an issue. So make sure you're doing that. Also, as we begin, if you're getting an error and you don't know where to begin, you can always clear out the cache. You can go to your browsing history, clean the cache, and then try it again. Those are two different options to make sure as we begin into this. Now, as we look at how to connect Firebase, there are two different ways. We are looking first at the 2024 version of how to connect Firebase to your account, but there is a more manual way that we have shown a couple times in our previous iterations of these videos how to do it, and those are that's old version. We're just calling it the 2023 way. So we're first going to go through the 2024 way, go through it step by step, and then go from there. So the first section is we're going to create a project and we're going to connect Firebase. Let's take a look at this. First, we're going to sign into your Flutterflow account. Once you sign in, you'll be at the dashboard. You're going to be seeing your projects and all those things. On the right-hand side, we're going to click create new. And then from here, we're going to create a new project. So we're going to say new project. I'm going to give it a unique name. And then I'm gonna create create blank. So I'm not starting from a template, I'm starting from scratch. I click this right here. And then it's going to say, welcome to Flutterflow, that's great. I'm going to skip this for now. And now I'm going to be taken here, right? So this is my brand new project. From there, how can I connect Firebase? I can go down to settings right here. So settings, I click that. And number one, I see the project name right here, project name, and then I see package name, right? So the project name, I'm gonna keep it the same for the package name, because if I plan to deploy it to uh, if, you know, the app store, I'm gonna make it a little bit more unique, right? So I have this, I have the project name, the package name, and now what I'm going to do is scroll down where it says project setup here on the left-hand side. I'm going to drop down to Firebase. Now, if we go to Firebase right here, it's going to say, what do we want to do? We can connect it in two different ways. Let us create a project for you. That's like the 2024 version. And then connect your own Firebase project. That's the old school way. Or if you already have a Firebase um, you know, project and you want to just do it manually, that's one way. Let's go first by creating a project. Now it says, Choose your project name and select the region, and we'll do the rest for you. You'll need to sign into your Google account and grant Flutterflow permission to use this feature. We're going to do that. So we click project right here. It has my project name. It's going to say Firebase Project Region. It's unset right now. You want to make sure that you pick a region where you're going to be having the most users there or where you're at. Right, so I'm in the United States, I'm gonna click US right here, and then it says sign in with Google. So I'm going to sign in, and remember, this is why I'm saying, you have to make sure if you have multiple Gmail accounts that it's going to be already synced, so when you log in, it's going to sync to the right account, so you won't get errors. So we sign in with Google here. What you're seeing off screen is, it's asking me what, um, choosing an account, what Gmail account I'm choosing. I'm choosing one, and then it's going to be creating a project. Now, if you look at this real quick, step-by-step, step, this is what they have for you right here in the documentation. There's gonna be a link down below for you to take a look at this. You go through this, it's gonna ask you on the sign-in screen to give it certain permissions. You're going to say continue. 
And then the last part is you're going to enable authentication in Firebase. That's really important because you need to be able to do authentication if they're signing in and with a username and password, those kind of things. And then also enabling storage on Firebase. Now that basically means you're going to be allowing it to save information. So you're making your application smart. That's what you're going to be doing. So you're gonna enable those two things. Remember there are videos, what to do. And then you're going to go right here and auto generate config files. So it mentions right here, it says number six, it says the configuration files are necessary when connecting to Firebase. It contains various settings and keys that enable your project to communicate with Firebase services. To generate the, those files, click on auto generate config files and then click generate files, right? So when it's ready, that's what you do. Now you see where it's like, it's saying um, creating project, it's gonna take a few moments. And then after it's done, you're going to be able to uh, navigate to Firebase here. And then right here, as you can see it right here, it says Firebase project created. And then all you have to do is enable auth on Firebase and enable storage. So we can click this. It will be going over here. Now, remember, this is why we're showing this kind of warning here. If it's signed into the wrong account, you're going to be seeing a warning or something like that's going to happen. Now, once you have everything, it's going to ask you for the permissions, you're going to be giving it, and then you'll be good to go. Remember, you're going to follow these different steps, and then it's going to authenticate, and again, you're good to go. Now, there are a couple different um, indications if you're having trouble. Let me back out over here. If you're having um, issues, if you're having different issues, there are ways to do it manually, right? So we have this, this is good, you can click it. But what if you're connecting your Firebase project or you need to go into Firebase to look at what, what the issue is? This is when you're into the project. And let me move this over here. And when you're in the project, you're going to the gears icon here. Then you go to users and permissions. And now right here, you see that we have Firebase, um, Firebase at flutterflow.io. And it has the role, it's an editor. I'm the owner, but this is the role at the editor that it has. But if we need to add permissions, you click on this button right here where it says advanced permission settings. You click that. And this is going into the console. So it might look scary, but you're going into Google Cloud Platform. Once you're going into Google Cloud Platform, it's actually giving you options how you can add things for the editor, which is Firebase, right? So if we look at it, I'm right here, but this is where Firebase is. If I need to add credentials or I need to add things, I can do this right here. Now, beyond being an editor, you need to go for Cloud Function Admin and Service Account User. You click this pencil icon, and that's where you're going to be searching for the role and you're giving that role to Firebase. This is the biggest problem that I see when people are just starting with uh, with Flutterflow and Firebase, they get, tr uh, they get tripped up there. And that's why we have a step-by-step -step guide as we're going through this. To so note, because we're in 2024 and we're doing this, the issue that I see also is when you're going into this section in the past, you could click the three dots and then it would allow you to see advanced you know, permissions and then go, such as in this section, let me go up. You'll click this, it will say, yeah, find new, hold on one second. Yeah, so the three dots basically allowed you to go to advanced permissions, it's down here instead. So once you do that, it's gonna take it here, you can add all of the different permissions that you need, and we have that written out right here. It says add two roles, advanced permissions for projects, takes you to Google Cloud Platform, right? So cloud function admin, search for filter account user, and then go from there, and then scroll down and find service account user, and then add cloud function admin. Those are the main things. Once you save those things, then you're going to have a lot of the errors resolved because you're going to be given 
Um, Flutter Flow can do its thing. The second thing that you have to look at is if you're not, now we mentioned over here, enabling storage on Firebase. If you click that and it goes through, you don't have to do this next section. This is what we're saying. You create a database and you go through what you need to do with creating a database and enabling authentication. This is found, if we scroll down right here, hold on, scroll, 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 configure your Firestone, uh, your Firestore database, right? Create uh, a database here. And then it says next, you will need to set your Firebase security. To get started, you can select start in test mode and click next. It says, we recommend updating your Firestore security rules before deploying your app. That makes sense. And they give you this link how to do additional security rules. Again, this allows you to get started and connect your database. The next part, it says enable billing, optional. If you're going to be doing something with um, push notifications or something like that, you have to upgrade your account to be on the Blaze plan. So that's something to, to consider and then connect and regenerate the, the files. So this is the process that we're seeing a lot of people get stuck on, and that's why we wanted to do um, this. Now, in the comment section down below, let me know, what does your error look like? What are you having trouble with? What's going on? There's one last thing. This I saw this on Stack Overflow. Some people were having trouble. Again, the authentication. If, they're, if you're having trouble with authentication, there's one other thing, and again, this is very specific here. If it says something like um, does not have author authorization or email sign-in, right? So this one is could not sign in as Firebase at flutterflow.io to your uh, Firebase project. Make sure email sign-in is turned on for your Firebase project and try again. Okay, so where would you go? If you're getting that kind of error, where would you go? So if we're going to go to the project overview, we would go under build, and then we have authentication here. Once you click authentication, you can say get started. You can get started right there with authentication, and then you can decide what you want to use for sign-in methods. To begin, I would probably just say email and password. You would click that, and then you would enable, and then save. Or if you want to just do email and password, save, depending on what you want to do to get started. But remember, this is the concept of finding out what kind of errors that you're getting. What do you need for your project? That's the first thing. Documenting what kind of errors you're getting. Not just saying, oh, there's an error, I can't do it. Make sure that you copy it as soon as you see it because it's trying to, Flutterflow is trying to give you indications of how to fix it. They're giving you a path of where to go. And then from there, you can decide, do you want Flutterflow to connect the project, which I suggest because that's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Or if you're going to connect your own Firebase project, you can follow along our process down below. Or there's a free re resource right here for the Flutterflow docs that goes step by step how to do it in the old way. And we have tons of videos how we did it in the last two years. In the comment section down below, let me know what you're dealing with, what you want to see next with building your Flutterflow project.